Welcome to the Prosper ISD GAF Train. I'm Michelle Phillips. I'm the Instructional Technology Specialist at Reynolds Middle School in Prosper ISD. My Twitter username is EdTechPhillips, and you can find this video and all my other videos on my edtechinaction.com website. So the first stop is going to be the basics of Google Drive. After you log in using your school email and your network login, let's look at the structure of Google Drive. The way that you know you're on your school account and not your personal is that you should see the Prosper ISD domain logo up in the top left corner. Underneath that, you'll see the drive symbol, the word drive, and then you should see the area where you'll find where you can create new files and upload existing files. There's a search box at the top in case you can't find a document. You'll find all your files and folders in the center area. You have your recent activity that you can close if you don't want it there. Then you'll have your drive settings bar and your Google Plus bar. So looking at the organization of Drive, when you click New, you have lots of options. You can create folders, you can create new files, or you can upload existing files and folders. Keeping different folders will help you organize your files. Let's take a look at My Drive. You may see a list view of your files, and if you do, over in the Settings, Drive Settings bar on your right, you can click that. So if you're seeing the list view, and you'd rather see the grid view, all you have to do is click that and it'll take you back and forth. So it's just a preference. I like seeing my folders on top and then my files down below. If I click new, I can create one of these new folders that will be at the top. I can upload a file, or upload an entire folder from my computer, or I can create new documents. Under My Drive, there's a Shared With Me, where everything that other people have shared with me is located. Google Photos, that's where my photos go that I upload. You have a Recent tab for anything that you've been working on recently. You can star different documents that you think are important, and there's also your trash. Your Drive Settings bar is on the right, and if you click on the gear icon, and then you look at settings, you have different settings. You can convert all your uploads to the Google Docs editor format. What that means is if you upload a Microsoft Word document, it will change it into a Google Docs. If you upload a PowerPoint, it will change it into a Google Slides. The great thing about the Google Docs editor format is they're easier to edit and share but also they don't take up any space in your drive. They count. They do not count against your drive. You can also sync all your documents offline. Don't ever do this on a public computer or a shared computer, but this way you can get to them when you're offline or they'll sync when you come back online if you change it. Underneath settings is download drive where you can download drive folders to your desktop. This is really helpful, especially if the network or the internet goes out and you, you can still access the documents. And then if you've clicked sync, when you come back online, they'll sync again. And then you have your keyboard shortcuts. You can also sort your files and folders. And then again, here's the list view or the grid view button. So looking at my drive again, you can sort your documents and folders by name, last modified, or last opened. Here is your recent activity. That's the I right there, it hide details. And so if you want to see what you've done lately, you can do that. Otherwise, you can click the X and it'll go away, or just click the I again. On the left and the bottom, it tells me how much space I've used in my drive. And if I click on Drive, it will actually show me all the files and how much space they're taking. Now, these are movie files and MP4 files, 
most of those. And then we get into my image files, which count against my storage, and then PDFs. But when you get down to the bottom, you'll notice that all of these are in the Google Docs editor format. So I have a Google Doc, a Google Slide, a Google Drawing, and they do not count against my storage. When I click on a document so that it's highlighted, as right there the, this choice board is highlighted, a new set of options appears. The first option is you can get the link to that document. You can share the document without having to open it. You can preview it or you can put it in the trash. There's also the three dots that represent more actions. If you click the more actions, you can open and with a certain program. You can move it, add a star, rename it. You can look at the details, make a copy, or download. So all these options, you can find them just by clicking on the document without opening it yet. If you right-click on the document, you also get all of these same options. The Google Plus bar, you'll notice that it has your name, and then it has all the squares, which is the way you access all your Google Apps. So if I wanted to go to Calendar or to Search or go to, to a, or go to Google Sites, any of these other ones, I can click More and there will be more that will show up. And you can go there by clicking there. I have my Google Plus notifications. If there's no notifications, you'll just see the bell. If you actually have notifications Google Plus, you'll see the circle with the number of notifications that you have. And you can just click on that to see what they are. And then you have either a blank spot with a silhouette of a, of a person or your own picture. If you click on that, you can get to your profile, you can change your picture, you can go to your account, or you can actually sign out from here as well. Important part of Google Drive is the ability to share. It's all about collaboration, but you need to know what you're sharing and how much access you're giving other people. So when you click share, the first thing you're going to see is the ability to share with others. So you can type in someone's name and share specifically with a person. Now, once you start typing in, all the Prosper users will start showing up depending on what you're typing, students and teachers. You'll know it's a student by it having a username at k12.prosper-isd.net. The at k12 simulates an email address for the students. Then you can choose whether they can edit, comment, or view. If they can edit, know that they're editing your document, the same one you're on. If they're viewing it, they can always make a copy of it and then edit it for their needs, but that way your copy is unchanged. You can also get a shareable link just to send out the link to the document. If you click Advanced, you'll notice more sharing settings. So right now this document was private to me. So if I click change, I would get different options. It's off unless you spe specify people or change the setting. So I can turn it on for only people in Prosper with the link can get to it. So they have to be logged into their Prosper ISD account to get to it with the link. The next option is on with anyone in Prosper ISD. So they have to be logged into their Prosper ISD account to get to it. The next option is on anyone with the link. So they do not have to be logged into Prosper ISD account, and as long as they have the link, they can get to it. And then there's just having it public on the web. And then once you decide what you want it to be and click Save, you'll copy and paste this link and send it out to whoever you want it to, unless you're just inviting specific people. Another great option is publishing to the web instead of sharing. This creates a separate web page where they can view the document on the web. They can't. This published files don't have editors, viewers. You're not setting specific right. It's just out there on the web. So you go to your file menu, and then you go to the publish to web. If you just want to publish the link, then you'll leave it here. You decide how 
fast this is a Google Slides, so it's how fast the slides actually will move forward. Or you can click embed. Embed will give you an embed code with which you can then put into a document and embed it like on a website or something. Once it's published, you can always unpublish it or stop publishing it by going through this same, go to file, publish to web, but then underneath all of this, you'll go to the bottom where it says stop publishing. A great use of so our math department is actually using the published web feature to embed a Google slide, which is what they give their topics of the day and the homework assignments. They're even hyperlinking the documents. The great thing about this is that when they're doing this, they don't have to keep updating their website. Once, since it's embedded, when they change the document in Google Drive, it's automatically changing on their website. They've even taken it a step further and they have embedded the exact same document. That means one person is in charge of changing the homework every week on, in their Google Drive, and then it updates on everybody's page. This has been a quick introduction to Google Drive. You'll find more videos going through the different Google apps at edtechinaction.com.